Hey everybody, Erin here from practicepharmacy.com, the student pharmacist site for study resources and real world pharmacy examples. Today I want to show you real quick how we compound Zosin from a bulk bottle. Normally we get dose sized vials and connect them to the appropriate sized bag of normal saline. So for instance, a Zosin 3.375 gram vial is snapped to a 100 milliliter bag of saline. This is done under the hood ahead of time. Then, when the nurse is ready to give the dose, they squeeze the bag and the contents are mixed together. However, if you've been in the pharmacy for any amount of time, you've heard the B word, and by that I mean back-ordered. In the hospital pharmacy, we're regularly told that various common items are on back order, and recently our unit dose Zosin was one of those things. It's for that reason that we had to compound it from the bulk package. All right, so here we go. This is a two-step process. In the first step, we take the bulk vial and reconstitute it. Then in the second step, we take the individual doses out of that bulk vial and prepare them in smaller piggybacks. To find out how to reconstitute the vial, we can look at the label. It says, reconstitute with exactly 152 milliliters of a suitable diluent to achieve a concentration of 200 milligrams per milliliter of piperacillin and 25 milligrams per milliliter of tazobactam. Okay, there are a number of questions you might ask about this statement. The most obvious one to me is, well, what is a suitable diluent? A less obvious question might be, how is the concentration of the resulting mixture determined from this information? Another question might be, how do I use the given concentration to prepare the individual doses? And a very practical question is, how many doses can I get out of one vial? All right, question one, what is a suitable diluent? To find out what diluent to use, we can look at the package insert. There's a section called reconstitution and dilution of powder formulas. And in that section is a list of compatible reconstitution diluents for pharmacy vials. And you see listed sterile water for injection and that's what we use. We can draw from a liter bag uh, of sterile water to mix the vials if we have several vials to mix, or if necessary, we can draw up from a number of smaller vials. Okay, now we know how to mix it. Now, question two was how is the given, how is the concentration of the resulting mixture determined from the given information? The bulk vial contains a total of 40.5 grams of Zosin. Zosin is a little bit different from most other drugs um, in that it actually contains two components, the piperacillin and the tazobactam, but the total amount is listed together. So instead of listing out how much piperacillin and then separately how much tazobactam, they're added together. So for instance, a dose of 2.25 grams of Zosin contains 2 grams of piperacillin and 250 milligrams of tazobactam. Okay, keeping that in mind, what the label is saying is the concentration of the resulting solution is 225 milligrams per milliliter of Zosin, um, which is 200 milligrams per, milli per milliliter of piperacillin and 25 milligrams per milliliter of tazobactam. But if you take 40.5 grams, which as we know is the same as 40,500 milligrams and you mix it with 100, 152 milliliters of sterile water, it would seem that the concentration would be about 266 milligrams per milliliter, but according to the label we get 225 milligrams per milliliter. So how is it that, um, where does this difference come from? Well. The reason that there is a difference is because of the powder that the drug is in. So we can actually even calculate the volume of that powder. All right, so if we take our 40,500 milligrams and we divide it by what the package is saying will be the concentration, 225 milligrams per milliliter, uh, the milligrams will cancel out and we'll be left with 180 milliliters. So our grand total volume is going to be 180 milliliters, but we know we're only adding 152 milliliters. 
So that leaves us with 28 milliliters unaccounted for by what we add, which is where the powder volume will come from. That 28 milliliters is the powder volume. Luckily, we don't have to figure this up every time we want to mix Zosin, but it does illustrate why it's very important to make sure your calculations are correct. Okay, now we know what to use to dilute the vial and how to go about diluting it. Once the vial is mixed, we have to get the individual doses drawn up. The concentration of 225 milligrams per milliliter is actually very convenient to work with, and I'm sure that's by design. The two most common doses that we see when we administer Zosin is 3.375 grams and 2.25 grams. So um, we take the dose that we desire and divide it by the concentration to get the volume that contains that dose. So if we take 2.25 grams and divide it by the concentration, which is 225 milligrams per milliliter, but 225 milligrams is the same as 0 0.225 grams. So we can divide that out, and of course that comes out to 10 milliliters. So in 10 milliliters, we'll have that dose. If we were to, we were to divide 3.375 by 0 0.225 grams per milliliter, that comes up to 15 milliliters. So if we need to prepare a 3.375 gram dose, we will drop 15 milliliters. And if we need to prepare a 2.25 gram dose, we'll drop 10 milliliters. And um, once we draw that up, we dilute it once again. The 3.375 goes into a 100 milliliter piggyback bag of normal saline. The 2.25 grams we put in 50 cc's of normal saline. And then those doses are ready. Alright, we've answered the first three questions and now we need to know before we go under the hood how many doses can we get out of one vial? Well, we know that there is 40.5 grams of Zosin in a vial and we want 2.25 grams for each dose. And that comes out to 18 doses per vial. And if you recall, we determined that one vial has 180 milliliters. And if we have 10 milliliters per dose, oops, 10 milliliters per dose, um, that would follow that we can get 18 doses out of each vial. All right, there you have it. Now you know how to mix a Zosin bulk vial and prepare the individual doses. I hope this was helpful for you. Please let me know what you think in the comments. If you found this video useful, please subscribe to my channel and check out practicepharmacy.com for more study resources and real-world pharmacy examples. See you next time.